Lesson 1.4 Dimensioning and Annotation In this lesson you'll learn how to create text, learn how to control and edit text, learn to control text formatting, learn how to place dimensions and learn how to control dimension formatting. Back to Vectorworks. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create text. We're going to learn how to format text, learn how to create dimensions, learn how to control them, and format those dimensions as well. We need to have your file from the previous lessons. Now, if you don't have it, I'm just going to do a quick reminder of how we created those rectangles. So remember, we started with the first one. Over here, I went and made this 2 inches or 50 millimeters, and the height was the same. We then set this dot here, the box position, and I changed those both to zero. The next one we used, we created a rectangle by starting there. Hit the tab key, 50, minus 50, or 2 inches and minus 2 inches. Enter once, enter again. And the last way, we double clicked on the rectangle tool. And again, this was 2 inches by 2 inches, or 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. We chose the box position at the top left, position it next click, and then click to place it. So there are my three rectangles, and now I can place text and I can place dimensions. This is my text tool. When I place text, it uses the default text formatting. And you might notice that it's pretty small and hard to read. If I go to text on the menu bar, I can format my text, and I can choose the style, the font, and so on. Now just before, why did I choose format text instead of going font, and then size, and then style, and then alignment, and so on? Well, the answer is, everything you need is in this one dialog box. It's the quickest way to do it. So I'm going to choose a text. Let's choose Helvetica. I'm going to choose a size. Let's make it readable, about 12 points high. Let's give it a single spacing. We don't want it bold. We can make it bold or italics. And we want the alignment to be top left. And here's a little preview of what it's going to look like. If we change our size to 6 point, you can see it's quite small and hard to read. So let's make it 12 point. Click OK. Now just notice that nothing is selected at the moment while I'm formatting my text. Now every time I write text, you'll be able to read it. So it's 12 point text. So that's 12 point text. Over here on my object info palette, you can see there's my text style, which I haven't talked about yet. We can see the font, and I can change the font. There's my size, and I can also change the formatting of that text. So I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, I can bold it, embolden if you like. So that's a quick start. Let's delete that text, and let's go back to our text. Let's go back to format text. So we've got it set here, Helvetica. I'm going to save this as a style. And I'm going to call it 12 point Helvetica. Fantastic. Now another font that I quite like using is Tecton. Not everyone likes this font, I understand that. Uh, but I quite like it. Tecton Pro Bold is my favorite. So let's go save and we'll call it 12 point Tecton. I now have two text styles saved. So let's go back to here. We'll create some text. And you'll notice that it's written in Tecton. But you'll also notice that there's actually a text style here. If I choose 12 point Helvetica, it changes straight away. So this is a great way of controlling your text. Not only does it control text here on this design layer, but it actually controls the text right through your file, which means that all of your text right through your file is consistent. Those of you that are slightly eagle-eyed will notice that I made a spelling mistake. Do we want to fix that? Let's right-click on our text. And we'll check our spelling. Oh, this is spelt wrong. It should be that one. So change it, please. And it's now done. So we can also check our spelling. Up here on the text menu, you can see we've got spelling. We've got capitalization, so I can make it uppercase. Let me just get out of that. I just hit the escape key to get out of that. Let's go back to capitalization. Let's choose uppercase. Changes all my text to uppercase. 
we'll change it to title caps or we can make it lowercase as well so capitalization lowercase so that can be quite handy when you're creating a, a block of text and you've forgotten to put it into uppercase you can do the whole thing so that's our text and that's our text formatting we have the ability to spell check our spelling so that's a right click and then check spelling we can also format the text we can edit the text and we can locate the text style in the resource manager and then we can make changes to it so here if I go to my resource manager there it is there I right click there and I choose edit and I'd like this to be not 12 point but something bigger so I'm going to make it 18 point Helvetica Eighteen point Helvetica. Let's make it eighteen points. Let's change this to Helvetica. Now the easy way to find it: start typing in the name of it, and it starts finding it. So Helvetica. We're going to make it bold, and OK. And you'll notice that all the blocks of text that use that text style have updated. It's really fantastic. OK, let's look at dimensioning. For showing you dimensions, I've gone back to my Fundamentals workspace. You'll find dimensions here on your Dims and Notes toolset. There's constrained and unconstrained dimensions. There's also the ability to put angular dimensions and arc line and radial dimensions. To place a linear dimension, we'll use the first mode. Go to the corner of an object, make sure it highlights, click once. Make sure you get that little snap, click again. And that creates a dimension for us. You'll notice that my dimension has little green handles on it, just here at the corner. Now, because I clicked on the corner of my dimensions, those little green handles associate my dimension to my object. If I change the size of my object, that dimension automatically updates. I can also double click on my dimension and I can change it here. So I could change that back to two inches. But you'll notice that one side of my rectangle moved and not the other. I'm just going to undo that. Let's double click on that again. You notice there's a blue dot here. This one doesn't have the blue center, nor does this one. If I hit the tab key, it makes the blue dot move along. And now it's gone to the end. And I make this two inches again. Enter. And the left side pulled in. So that can be a really powerful way. If you're designing a building, it can be a really powerful way of changing the room sizes by changing that dimension. This little dotted line here controls my witness line length, so I can pull that up and down. And the other thing I can do is to change the formatting of that dimension style. Over here we have arch dimensions, we've got ASME, we've got BSI, ISO, and so on. Just choose the one you like. I tend to use the arch one because my training is architectural and I can change the length of the witness lines that way back to my dimension tool now we also have the ability to do chain dimensions so I'm going to delete that one we're going to do a chain dimension so click at that corner click on that corner click to place your first dimension all your other dimensions will line up with that so it's one click for each new dimension double click to finish and there we are Click to start, click to finish, click to place your first dimension, click, and now you can see I accidentally clicked, so I'm just going to hit the backspace or the delete key, and then double click to finish. Now that I have my dimensions, if I go to this part of my dimension, the dimension line, I can click and drag that, and it drags all of my dimensions up and down. If I grab the text of one dimension, I can move that dimension around. Move it in, move it out. And when I move my dimension line up and down, you'll see they stick to it and they still continue to move up and down. If I need to add an extra dimension or delete a dimension, I can right click and I can delete a dimension. And then I can right click again and I can add a dimension. And I can stick one there and double click to finish by sticking one there. There's a little bit of left over here. If I just zoom in and out a little bit, it'll go away. There's my dotted line there. Now you notice when I pull that one, it pulls all my dimensions. And that doesn't look so good. I'll just undo that. 
use my control Z control Z and I can also apply a text style to these so I could apply 12 point Helvetica to that or I could apply my 18 point Helvetica to it so it becomes quite easy to keep all of your graphics all of your text and all of your notes together There's one other tool I'd like to mention, which is this one here, which is my call-out tool. Click on this button here, the preferences. I'm going to turn off the get text from database. And now we'll just use it as a regular type object. And I can just type in whatever I want. This is a call out text again I've got my spelling wrong so I can go check spelling and I can find call out or if I can't find it I can just retype it. In this lesson you learned to create text. You learned how to control and edit text. You learned to control text formatting. You learned how to place dimensions and you learned how to control dimension formatting.